Well, hello, everybody. Larry here. Thought I'd get on today and do uh, a live chat. Number 76, looks like. How's everybody doing today? Uh, I usually come on if and when i able to come on, 1 o'clock or between 1 and 3. But uh, I thought, you know, why not just come on now? Labor Day weekend's just down the road. In fact, we're in the weekend. And a lot of us are going to be off from work going out of town, going to the lake, camping out, having fun with the pins. I believe there's a, what, a pin show coming up in, is it Colorado, where, this month? Uh, people were asking about that, uh, about Jim Hines' uh, pins. I read something where Jim wasn't able, I believe, not to be able to make the show this month, but I think he said his daughter, and is it Francisco that will be there? Now, don't hold me to that. I'm thinking I read that somewhere. Uh, but uh, Jim, I am, I'm assuming, will be at the Dallas Pin Show this month. So let me kick back a little bit here. I got ahead of myself. Uh, I was talking about last month. There was a pin show. I forgot where was it that Jim couldn't make. And I think it said his daughter and Francisco were going to make it because you know he's recovering from that surgery he had. But I believe he's going to be at the Dallas pin show this month. If I got all of it right. I mean, there's been so much going on here with me. Uh, uh, I'm going every which way but loose. But anyway, that's what's happening here. Um, I'm not going to stay on for a long time since it's Labor Day weekend here. Uh, not a lot of people probably be on. But anyway, uh, the Dallas Pin Show, it's going to be this month, the 28th and the 29th. It's on a Friday, and they open up from 10A to uh, 10A to uh, 8p and then on saturday from 9a to 5p so if y'all have a chance come on down and check out the show uh what else is going on oh a few vintage pins which i've done the review on uh on the snake skin trio pin this is really an a cool pen. Um, I picked this up on eBay. And uh, I've got some feedback on it that was very helpful. Uh, the people were thinking that probably it's an independent pen maker that uh, loves making pens and made this pen. And a lot of them use the, was it Schmidt nibs, I believe? So I am slowly but surely finding out information about this pen. Uh, last but not least, I want to talk about the Parker Sonnet that I just did a review on. Beautiful blue lacquered with a gorgeous, nice, 18k go live. I don't know if you can see that, Mr. Announcer. Can you see? Kind of help me out here. I can't see on the other end. Maybe out, yes. How about now? Try a little closer and see if it'll focus. Okay. Whoa. That's about the best I can get it. Uh, the story behind this pen. When I was trying to get the pen, yeah, you, know, you can make an offer. Uh, and I was looking at the nib, uh, checking out the pen as much as one can check it out when you're on the internet looking at pictures. Uh, so, and I was asking, asking the seller a bunch of questions, and the seller was answering the questions but wasn't sure much about the pen, just what I reviewed on. So when I got the pen in, I opened it up and looked at the nib, and then I took a look at the picture from the seller and I was comparing them both and this pen had the gold nib on it 
and the one in the picture did not have a gold nib on it. So I went back to the seller and let the person know that the picture that uh, he had wasn't the same nib that he had in the picture that is on the pen. And I tried to explain to him and he said it was. So at least I tried to, to let him know that it wasn't just a steel nib. It was a gold nib, but Hello to a big block. Hey, big block. But anyway, that's a story on the pen. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes you get lucky and people don't know what they're selling and they'll sell you a whatever pen at a great bargain. And sometimes you guys get lucky or we get lucky and we, we may find a, uh, a great deal. Uh, and then the seller's not so lucky or vice versa. The seller may be real lucky and we may not be as lucky, but uh, this is really a, a cool pen. It's not a big pen, but it's a nice writer. And I have been enjoying it a lot. So that will take care of that. Dallas, back to the Dallas Pen Show. Myself and Mr. Announcer will be there uh, Saturday morning. Um, not sure about what time, maybe about 9, 9.30-ish, somewhere in that vicinity. Uh, we, be, we will be meeting some other folks there. If you want to hook up with us, you know, send me an email or something, let me know. Um, uh, Doug's uh, still wagon is going to be meeting us there. Frank and Cara Overman uh, is going to meet us there. Uh, and uh, young man named Danny from Houston will be meeting us there. Uh, so whoever else like to join us uh, and hang out for a bit, uh, you're welcome to. Just uh, you know, let me know, uh, or you can just look for us out there and uh, hook up with us. Uh, also, uh, the uh, Forward Pin Club, yay, coming on this month, and I believe it's going to be on the 10th of this month uh, at 6.30 at the same place at the uh, Dixie Cafe on Hewland Street. So if you'd like to come out, check out the Fort Worth Pin Club, come on out. I will be doing some reviews on, I got some cool glass pins in. Uh, and what's neat about them is that uh, I got these from, from China. Uh, and they I'll show you a bit real quick. They come with a vial of ink. That's pretty cool. And here's I. They come in a little, like a gift box, pin box trying to get it to focus here as best I can. Uh, and uh, they write really well. Uh, I was really impressed with it. I had one before a couple of years ago, but it got thrown away by accident. But look at this beautiful pen. It really is pretty. Really nice. I love that blue Look at that, just swirling, just really nice pen. So I'll be doing some reviews with this. And what's going to be cool about it, it for me, uh, when I do my ink samples, my testing on paper, these will come in really handy. And, and they come with a, uh, a uh, pen holder. And this is it right here. everything in order here and you just put your little pin in there and boom uh then i i've got one that i'll be doing a review on what's the name of that pin do you see it over there mr announcer uh in the box where? is it right oh, there the uh it's the sanford desk set the sanford desk set now that's going to be really interesting it's uh 
I believe from the 40s or 50s. I forgot. I don't have it in front of me. But that's going to be really neat. Uh, I've been running a vintage uh, desk set. And uh, this is an actual dip pen. It's not the, it has the feet on the, on the nib. There's a whole unit where you just dip it in. It's not like your typical dip pen that doesn't have a feed on it. So this is going to be interesting. It comes with the inkwell, uh, two ink bottles. And uh, I'll be showing, doing a review on it, uh, how that will operate. So I can't wait to get on that one. That's going to be really cool. Um, I don't have them with me. Let me see if I do or not. Uh I wanted to mention, I uh, am about done with the uh, pin carry for the snake skin pin, the Parker Sonic, and there's one more uh, that I have to clean out. But what I went ahead and did was ink a few more, and... Uh, here is the, the Bauer. Really, you know, I haven't used this in a long time. I'll be talking about that later. It has a medium nib, really nice pen. And here's the uh, Langmo. Is that how you pronounce it? Limo. Limo. Uh, right here. A fine nib. and But this pen is exceptional nice. It, it really writes really, really nice. Haven't used that one in a good while. And last but not least, here is the Shiro Bent Nib Calligraphy Pen. And that's really a, a, a wet one. Um, got that inked up. I'll be doing a review this week on the Pelican P55, a very interesting pen. Uh, it reminds me of the Lamy Safari a lot. Uh, and here is the Lamy, is it the Avon? Ion. Ion, the Lamy Ion. A really nice fountain pen. And I haven't used this, God, maybe just once, maybe this year, maybe, or not at all. So. I've inked it up my second time to get some use out of it. And last but not least, a Durograph Flex. Uh, for me, this really works well. It lays down the ink, and I do get some flex out of it. Uh, there's people that uh, were unhappy with the pen. They said it didn't flex, it hardly flex. But uh, for me, this pen works really nice, so I'm okay with it. So I thought I'd share that while I'm on here. So, okay, where have I been? I've been really, really busy lately. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to be upside down, all around, inside and out, because a lot of stuff been going on. I We we did about enough videos for 7 to 14 days, and we had them scheduled to come on. Then, what do you know? The computer shut down. Lost everything, had to get another computer, a tower anyway, and start doing it all over again. So that was a a drag. It just kind of put a damp into everything. So there goes more money spent. So had to get that taken care of. And then a friend of ours, our roommate, got ill. Had to go to the ER. This was last month, June the 31st, July 31st, where he went went in. Uh, he couldn't swallow. Well, I found out he had double pneumonia, and they also found out he had a tiny stroke, which affected the esophagus, and he couldn't swallow. So they had to put a feeding tube in his abdomen. So I've been helping him with that. We had to crush up his meds. Um, helping him with the, the feeding, which he can do on his own. He's doing much better now. 
And now thank God that he is finally starting to swallow and starting to eat solid food because he was he's on that what kind of canned food is he drinking? Glucerna. Glucerna. What he takes, it can take uh, four and a half cans a day. But really all he takes now is just one can in the morning. And then, you know, I cook him lunch and dinner. Uh, I started him out with some puree food, meat, vegetables, puree them separately. So see if we can get them down. And yes, he does. Uh, back up the story a little bit. He has a nurse that comes once a week and a therapist that comes twice a week. She has this little uh, magnet gadget they put right here and you turn it on and it works your throat muscles and it helps them to get stronger and when this is these muscles right in here so you can swallow so that helps a lot and you know he's able now to drink fluids uh he's eating jello pudding uh i made him a let's see a real dinner last night he had a hamburger steak, uh, cream corn, vegetables, carrots. I don't know what else. And he just devoured all of it. Uh, so he's been doing really, really good on that. You know, he has applesauce. He drinks his coffee. So he's come a long way. And God willing, hopefully, when he sees a doctor, uh, he'll see the doctor uh, on the 10th. No more they're going to keep the feeding tube in or, or take it out. But hopefully if everything keeps going like it is, he'll go back to work this month sometime and get a release. And uh, he may have to go with the uh, feeding tube. Not sure yet. Uh, but if he doesn't, hopefully they'll take it out. But everything is looking good and everything is coming back to normal. I've just been really, really busy between doing the videos, getting them all done, Mr. Announcer doing his part on the videos, and then the computer going down, lost everything, and now we have to redo everything all over again. A lot of work when you're doing reviews for videos. Well, at least for, for, for me it is. It's, you know, I have to do a lot of homework which is okay, uh, but, he, you know, doing the videos, it takes a lot of work. There's a lot of process to it. Um, then getting them ready to, to upload on YouTube. And then with uh, Alan getting sick, so I'm here and there. and uh, But I have still been journaling. So anyway, uh, so uh, who was on? I'm sorry, it went off screen. Big Block. Oh, well, hello, Big Block. Now, is that the gentleman from where? Germany. Germany. Peace, brother. Yeah, uh, we didn't expect for anybody to be on because this is Labor Day weekend, and, you know, everybody's, like, dicking the scene outside. But uh, we thought we'd go ahead and come on a bit early because I've got a whole lot of things i got to do. i got to do some ink sample tests. I've got to get ready for videos on the vintage uh, ink set, desk set that I that I have. I've, I've done part one and fixing to do part two. I've got to do a check on the vent, uh, not on the vintage, but on the glass pins. Uh, and then i got a, a wooden set from Barnes & Noble. It's kind of cool. If you can see that pretty good there. There we go. And it came with a bottle of ink. And then got some more nibs. So I've got enough to keep me busy. Um, I've got some uh, notebooks coming up. Journaling coming up. So I've got a lot of things coming up. I... I guess I organized the pin room again. How long will it stay organized? Who knows? But anyway, that's what's been going on. So, uh, let's see. Hello to Andrew. Hey, Andrew. How's it going, guy? What else has been happening? Uh, 
ink. That's what I was going to talk about. Ink, 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 ink. Let me get my little book out here for a minute here. Ink. Uh, Brian from the Pen Thing store sent me a sample of ink. And I thought I'd share it with you guys. See if you've heard of this ink. I never heard of it. Uh, it is. Where did it go here? I'm looking for it. Black. Okay, not the Ackerman. Forgive me, I'm looking for it. Mm, not the Schneider. Oh, dye mine blue. Well, he did send me some ink. And I'm trying to get the name of it. Bear with me, folks. I'm totally unorganized again. But I do have it somewhere. Uh, Andrew suggests backing up uh, information to a thumb drive just in case more problems arise. Uh, I do use backup. Uh, I have, to, I have a, a two terabyte backup drive that I got that I'm starting to back up those. The videos are usually about 1.1 1 .1 and a half gig a piece. So those won't fit on a thumb drive. Uh, Big Lock likes the uh, dip pins, uh, but he says his handwriting isn't quite good enough Mine either. to uh, use them too well, but he has fun with them. Well, there was some ink that I wanted to, to bring up and I just cannot find that little rascal what I did with it. I thought I, put my sample down but you know after I get through with the chat here watch me find it uh, but what was the name of it I'm trying to think of the name uh, la, 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 la. not really bugging me because I can't find it maybe I have it on my coloring here Got everything else on it. It's a blue black. John Stewart kind of rings a bell, maybe. Hello to Jason. Hey, Jason. Uh, forgive me, guys. I am trying to find some ink that, uh, wouldn't you know it? I do not know what I've done with it. And here it is. Ta-da! Nick Stewart, Randall, Blue Black Ink. I think I'll show it to you guys real quick. Finally, that's what it looked like. I don't know if you can get a good look at that color. But uh, Brian from the Pen Thing store sent it to me. And, uh, you know, when I first saw it, it was like, okay. Here it is again. You can see that better. But, you know, it didn't do much for me. But after I started riding with it for a while, I'm starting to develop an attraction for the ink. So, that's one thing that's going on. Um, there's another ink. that I wanted to bring up. The uh, Noodler's Black. If anybody ever tried that? If so, what are your comments about the Noodler's Black ink? And uh, and the Ackerman, the uh, SBR as brown brown um, had that ink that came out if you tried that any feedback on that uh, last but not least uh, Carl Overman sent me a sample of the Noodler's Texas Live Oak and that was some nice ink I really did like that I I don't have a lot of Noodler's ink but I do have some Noodler's ink hello to the Overman clan and to Pete Hello, over McClan, and hello, Pete. So, um, those are some of the inks that I wanted to throw out to you guys and get your feedback on. 
uh, vintage pens. You know, I, I, I was asked about why don't I show more vintage pens? Well, I don't have a whole lot of vintage pens. I'm just now starting to really get into them. I do have a few that I've done a few years ago. Uh, and you can check out the channel, my channel for that, uh, Estherbrook Vintage. Uh, and they're bag fiddlers, and they really are nice. Uh, but I, like I said, I've just gotten into them, so I'm, I have some more coming in. I've got a, I think it's going to be, don't hold me to this, I think it's a Swan Piston Filler from 1940s, I believe. So that's coming in. I have done some reviews on the wherever uh, fountain pens. I really like them. And on the... Uh, Oh, what was the name of those pens? Uh, well, they weren't Schaefer's. Were they? Well, I, I've had some Schaefer's. Uh, here is the Wherever pen that I've uh, been doing some reviews on these in the bigger size, like this one. Really a nice writer. Uh, all of them are nice writers. Uh, but back to the vintage... I had some uh, emails asking about vintage pens. They're so expensive. No, they're not. Uh, just depending what you buy uh, and who you buy from, you just have to do a lot of shopping. You don't have to get a vintage pen that's going to be necessarily a gold nib to make it a, a good pen. How I do it is, I you know, I, I look on eBay and I'm seeing what's out there as far as vintage-wise. And then I check uh, the uh, description box because I don't. I want it already reconditioned. I don't want to have to buy all the parts, break down the pin, and you know, redo the bag, the lever, the piston, whatever it may be. I, I I'm really just too busy. I've got enough on my plate already to to take time and and do that already you know i may spend two or two to four hours in the pen room just doing my ink swabs ink samples write some history down doing the homework on some upcoming reviews not just on pens on papers on journals notebooks doing some journaling some notes about uh point uh, pointers on journaling uh refixing my pen drawers with different uh pen trays uh, so, you, you know, I, I stay pretty busy. So, uh, and I just don't want to have to, okay, I need to order this part, that part, find this part, and then take this out, put it in, do that. So, uh, again, I just find them that recondition. Yeah, you're going to pay a little bit more to have them already ready to go fixed. But to me, it's worth it, so I don't have to buy all the parts. Yeah. Andrew has an inexpensive vintage Esterbrook and a Pelican, and is looking forward to meeting us at the Dallas Pen Show. Cool. Okay. Yeah, uh, the Esterbrook that I have are right here. I've got four, in fact, and I like them. I, I, I really do. This is the smallest one, and the rest of them are larger. But uh, you can find reviews on that. But uh, I, I do like the Estherbrook Vintage a whole lot. Uh, I have some stipula that are, I think, back in the 80s, I'm thinking. But again, uh, depending what the pin is on Vintage, uh, you can buy a, a vintage pen like the uh, wherever, like I did. Uh, I think I paid twelve to fifteen dollars. Now this this pen may not do a lot for a lot of folks. It may just be a, eh, 
no big deal, look fat and pin, boring, ugly, whatever. But to me, this pin came out, I believe, in the 50s, and they called it the 50 cent pin. You can find them on drugstores' counters. They had a little uh, tray set they would hold them in, uh, carousels you can turn around with all these pins on them. Um, and they would sell these by the buckets full. Uh, and the description on these pins, they were almost indestructible. And also, uh, on the feed, if you can see this feed, I've learned something new about the clear plastic feed. The reason this they made this clear plastic feed, and this isn't by me, this is from the... Uh, the people who made this pen, yeah, so people like could see that you still have ink in your pen from the feed. And that makes a lot of sense. It would show me that, yeah, I have ink left, and then you could see that, well, I could see that the ink was starting to get lighter on the feed, and it was about to run out. So, but it's the history about the pen. That's what it's all about. If this pen could talk, if any of these pens can talk, you know, now they don't have all the bells and whistles, the, uh, you know, the high polished, beautiful uh, ebonite or resin, uh, you know, uh, silver, gold trim. Th these pens to me have history. Just kind of sit back in your chair when you're writing with a fountain pen, really. And think about the pen that you're holding, if it's vintage. And just ask yourself, if this pen could talk, just think of the conversation you can have with a fountain pen. That vintage pen could tell you where he or she has been, what they've been writing about, they could tell you how the writer that used the pen was, what kind of person he or she was, what kind of day they had. It's history. To me, it's all about history. It's all about the pen. You know, no gold nibs, no fancy gold clips or sterling silver clips or bands, no gold bands, nothing like that. These were the pens that people would buy, take them to work, go to school with. If you lose them, you lose them, you get another 50 cents. Frank agrees with you, and we're going to know the stories. So, but anyway, that's where these pens come in. Um, and I got another one here, and this one could be a wherever, but I think not. I'm thinking this is because the nib, yeah, this is a wherever, yep, made in the USA. And the difference is just show you, you know, one's a demonstrative clear barrel with a cartridge, or it could be an eyedropper. But, you know, can you just imagine back in the day using these pens, talking about a moment. I bet you these little babies had their days, you know? And it was from these types of pens that created the pens that there are today. You know, they did the groundwork. They broke the ground, I, I think. All those pens back from the... Uh, 40, 30, 40s, they laid the groundwork out for the future pins that evolved today. And here they are, the new pins that we have today. Hello to Yogesh. Hello, Yogesh. Hey, Frank. Hey, Andrew. Am I missing anybody? Da -da -da -da. So, hey, Jason. I have the screen over here, but it doesn't last too long. It'll kind of 
goes off and on. Yeah, you know, I've done everything I can to try to make a stay, but beats me. But anyway, um, so that's my take on vintage pins. Yes, they can be affordable. Yes, they can be expensive. Uh, if you already get a, let's say, you get a vintage Schaefer whatever model, gold nib, even a steel nib, it all depends on condition. The first thing I always look at is what's under the hood, the nib. How is the nib? And then I go from there. Uh, but uh, I've never spent two or three hundred dollars on a vintage pen. Not yet. Um, I do like the Schaefer snorkels a lot. Really good pen. I have one that was given to me. Even a Mont Blanc. I have the uh, that was given to me a nineteen. 90 vintage 14k Mont Blanc that extremely one magnificent rider. I can tell the difference between the 14 and the 18k, you know. So, uh, but yeah, you can, depending where your head's at on the vintage pins, if you're looking for a vintage pin that looks amazing got all the bells and whistles then be prepared to pay more money for it if you're looking for a vintage pen that isn't everyday common but only but goody vintage pen then you'll you know you can get it for 12 on up depending uh have you ever been in the auction before you know how auctions can go. You win a few, lose a lot. But how much is a pin worth? I was asked, not just once, but many times. And it's for me, it's easy. It's however, how much I think I want to pay for a pin when I'm in an auction. And I would set a certain price and I would work up to that price and then I would stop now I, I've broken that rule twice over two pins I think by five or ten dollars but I usually stay on track on how much I'm going to spend so that's my take on vintage pins you know when you're buying a vintage pin are you buying it because the history you know, the year it was made and the story that it brings and how it was made and when and all that kind of good stuff with the vintage. Or are you buying a vintage pen that really looks classy, sharp, the gold nib, that has all the bells and whistles because you just like that style? And that's okay. That's cool. You know, uh, it's whatever your thing is on pens. But, uh, yeah, you can afford, uh, I mean, uh, vintage pens can be affordable. Uh, Big Block says he just received an old unbranded small vintage pen with a gold nib for about $25. It rocks beautiful, but has a few start problems when capped for a while. There you go. Yeah. Yep. And back to this pen again, I mean, I, I was really lucky when it came with a gold nib. And I did, like I said, explained to the seller but the seller kept saying no that was a nib so I was okay but anyway so much for the Parker Sonic so that's what's been going on with me for those that have just come in that was pin show Mr. Announcer and myself are going to be there uh we're going to meet Doug uh still wagon there Frank and Carl Overman we're going to meet Danny there and who else was going to be there? I believe that was Andrew. Andrew is going to be there. Uh, we'll meet up with him. Uh, you can catch us either when we're going to the door or somewhere through the show. Now, how long will I be there? Well, you know, due to my spine condition, I don't know. You know, uh, 
last year, I think we were there, what, hour and a half? Mm-hmm. Year before that, we were there a couple hours, weren't we? Yeah. A couple of two or three hours, in fact. It just depends how the spine's feeling and how well I can walk. Um, but uh, that's that. Uh, I'm going to have a giveaway coming up. I might do it, start it tonight or tomorrow. It's going to be one of these shirts. Uh, and these are medium that I have in right now. I don't know if you can see it very well. Let me see if I can get close enough so you can see it. Anyway, it's blue with a dark green bow tie, Larry's fountain pen. That goes straight to my YouTube channel. Uh, but uh, I'll be doing a giveaway with the T-shirt. Probably a... Uh, a pen from Fountain Pen Revolution, the, uh, what is it called? Not the Ind Indus? Indus. Indus, yeah. It's a new Indus, but with a new bottle of black and blue ink. Let me find that little jewel. And here she is. This will be going with the shirt. The pen, the ink, and the shirt, and then on the other shirt, I may do a, a shirt and a coffee mug with it. So those are the upcoming giveaways that are going to be coming up. Again, I'll say this again. When I reach 5,000 subscribers... I'm going to do a big, huge giveaway. I'm going to go nuts. And it's going to be coming from the pin thing store, from Brian's store. I'm going to have him. This is only for the U.S. because shipping, he tells me, it cost him too much to ship uh, outside the U.S. Sorry, guys. Uh, but it's going to be the Lombie 2000. It's going to be, a, I think, a medium nib. I'll be buying that from Brian. He's going to throw in notebooks, I think a rhodium, and ink, and something else. And I'll probably throw in a few extra goodies. So the, the giveaway, when I reach 5,000 subscribers, I think total cost, probably around four or $500 that I'm going to packaged together uh you know because for me 5,000 subscribers is a lot of viewers if i had the money i would give each of my subscribers a pen maybe broke but then that's okay but i don't have that kind of money so anyway i got a couple of uh, giveaways coming up um Somebody asked me, I should have saved the email, do I have any more channels? Hmm. I just have one YouTube channel. You can find me on Instagram. And I have Facebook. Uh, on social media there, Larry's uh, Fountain Pens. Plus, uh, Larry the Pin Bug uh, Pin Pal. I have that on Facebook. I think I'm on Instagram, which I don't do a whole lot of Instagramming. Uh, is it Instagram? What's the other one? Uh, Snapchat, but I don't think you're on there. No, I'm not on there. There's Instagram and something else. I do Instagram. There was well, there was something else that was brought to my attention. Ah, Twitter. Ah, that's it. Yeah. I, I don't do a whole lot of twits, so... Uh, So that's where you can find me, but I only have one YouTube channel, and, and that's it. Oh, I know what it was also. On Facebook, I think well, I used to have like three names on Facebook, wasn't it? We got rid of two of them, and we're trying to get rid of the other one because people keep sending me friend requests, and I don't accept it because they're already on my list. And so... We're trying to delete the other one I have on Facebook. Yes, I have sent messages to Facebook. Yes, I am waiting. 
but uh, they're a little bit slow. So if you if you're on Facebook and you sent me a friend request, if you're already on my list, I won't respond to it because I'm not sure if somebody else just trying to scam or maybe you think that you're not on my friend list, but you really are, I won't respond to it. If it makes sense, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. So, hey, what's the plans for everybody? Labor Day weekend eh, coming up. It's already here, right? Mr. Announcer is here? Yes. It's here. This is it. So, what's the deal? What are y'all doing? Anything? Besides hanging out with me? Hello? Stop looking at me. Eh. So, when I was acting like an idiot, which I do 24-7, Mr. Announcer wanted to take a hidden video and put it on YouTube or Facebook. I would totally die. Mm. Anyway, so. Frank says he hasn't been told yet what they're doing. Ah, Frankie, baby. All right. Mm. Well, it's. Car, if you're watching, love my bow ties, baby. I have been wearing them. Yes, I have. Love, love my bow ties. Yeah. Kara makes me bow ties. She's my custom bow tie maker. Oh, she can make anything, really. You name it. That's her thing. Right now, she's working on some uh, a Starbucks stuff for me. Uh, a bow tie and I'm not sure if it's going to be a uh, what type of bags. But anyway, she's doing some stuff for me. So what are we going to be doing for Labor Day? Let's see, Labor Day started absolutely zero. I will be working on videos because, like I said over again, we lost all those videos when the computer went completely kapush out zap. Which costs money. And, you know, I, I'm i trying to save up for a Pelican M815. Uh, Big Block says he uh, got home from work in Austria yesterday, continuing work there uh, tomorrow so he can afford some more pins. Oh, I know what I'm thinking about. I am seriously thinking. I haven't put it on any sites yet of selling my almost new, but it's used because I have did some reviews on it. The Aurora Optima Flex, that new one that came out, limited edition. Uh, I paid almost $600 for it. Uh, if I sell it, it will come like I received it in the box, a whole nine yards. Uh, but it's got to be at a, I'm going to sell it for a decent fair price. Uh, I think I've used the pen, really. Are you ready? Believe it or not, I've looked it up how many times I've used it. Three. Uh, one for a review and twice to write some pen pal letters. That was it. So why do I want to sell it? Uh, to be honest with you, we just didn't connect. That connection with the fountain pen just didn't do me. I don't do a lot of flexing. I, I, I really don't. Uh, so we just didn't connect. Uh, I like my Duograph flex a lot. It may not be your A1 flexor, but it, to me, it does the job. It's a nice wet nib. So I probably will be selling the Aurora. It's a nice pen. Don't get me wrong. Nice, beautiful nib. It writes extremely well. It does everything you expect this Aurora to do. You've seen reviews on it. It does everything it said to do. 
But we just didn't connect. Don't you ever get a pen that you see and you really love and you have to have it and you want it and you desire it and just I got to have this pen. I just got to have it. It's an Aurora, baby. And you get it and you open the box. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then you start writing with it. Yeah. Okay, so why was I so hipped up on it? Well, now I'm not as hip. So I may be selling that. So anybody out there um, that's interested, you can email me and we can go from there. In fact, I have the box right over there. I don't know if you can see it. Right. Let me see. Let me turn this around a little bit. See it behind it? See it? The royal box, that black one right there. That's it. That's where it's going to come in. So that's how it's going to roll. Huh. I like the picture over there better. What do you think, Mr. Announcement? See okay. my stash. See my stash. All right. So, all right. So let me critique real quick. Fort Worth Pin Club, September 10th, if I'm correct, 6.30. And, uh, the Dallas Pin Show is the 28th and the 29th from 10 to 9 on the Dallas Pin Show and on Saturday from 9 to 5. Now, Mr. Announcer, will you please announce all the vendors that are going to be at the Dallas Pin Show because not just one, not just five, but I've had 10 people to ask me these questions about the time, dates, and who is going to be there. So are you ready? Here we go. Mr. Announcer, take it away. Okay, they are Ann P. Tran, Anderson Pins, Andy Lambro, Armin Malikian, Artistic Papers, Bill Zebel, Bittner, The Pleasure of Writing, Blue Sky Pins, Brandon McKinney, Rodwell Studios, Carlene Wolf, Country Made Pins, Dan Reppert, Dave Glass, Davis Rankin, Derry Harding, Drum Ghouls, Elizabeth Langley, Fountain Pen Revolution, Franklin Christoph, Grandpa's Fountain Pens, Heinz Pens, Ink Pen, Jerry Thompson, Joe Lowe, Calligraphos Calligraphy Guild, Kenro Industries, Laban Pen, Larry Bettinghouse, Luxury Brands USA, Marco Avila, Michael Bloom, M Mike at Work, Mike, Mike Stein, Mike Walker, Newton Pins, Papier Plume, Patrick Ross, Paul Block and Bill Morris, Pin Addict, Pin Demonium, Pete's Pin Shop, Presnell Wood, Provincial Mills, Redeem Pins, Regal Curio, Retro 51, Rick Beckham, Rob Bader, Robert Fillmore, Ryan Krusak Studios, Scribal Workshop, Spencerian.com, Stephen Howell, Stephen Fuller, Cassia, Tactile Turn, The Penman, The Right Pen, ThePenMarket.com, Tim Pearson, Total Office Products, Toys from the Attic, Van Ness Pen Shop, and Vintage Schaefer. And there you have it, a complete list of all the vendors that are going to be at this year's Dallas Pin Show. Thank you, Mr. Announcer. Okay, uh, Frank, we're planning to be there, God willing, 9.30-ish, uh, 10 o'clock, maybe earlier, but we can give you a buzz when we leave the house. Cool? Cool. All right, so we got that taken care of. But yeah, I've had 10 emails, emails asking about who's going to be there. Yes, on Saturday, Frank. So. It's going to be quite a show, I think. Oh, I know what I was going to say. For those that go into the pin show, plan on buying any certain pins. You know, I'm not sure about pins yet. I am sure I'm going to be looking at paper and notebooks like I 
don't have enough. You see, up here are notebooks. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but down there are notebooks. And down here, if you can't see, are more notebooks. Hello, I, hello to Ink Guy. Hey, Ink Guy. And I, on the bottom of this one, again, there's more notebooks. So, yeah, I've got notebooks. So why do I keep getting notebooks? I don't know. I'm just a geek. I love notebooks. Notebooks. Now, while it's all dry, I wanted to share. This is what I use for my ink sample. One of them, anyway. And I wanted to show you this ink here after it has dried for a while. First of all, the Lamy pink ink right here, that vibrant, yeah, it didn't do much for me at all. I got rid of it. Here's the ink that, let me find it. It's a really nice shade of pink. Let me find it. Oh, here it is. Ah. Ackerman pink right here. You can see. There it is. That's a real nice shade of pink right there. One of my favorite pinks. So, thought I'd share that with you guys. Okay, folks. Well, back to about Labor Day. Uh, we'll be working in the pen room. At least I will. Um... And I'm thinking tonight, of course, nobody knows it at the house yet but me. I'm thinking about watching maybe a scary movie outside in the backyard tonight. What do you think about that? Hmm. Or maybe uh, pull up Godzilla or something. Or something cool and mysterious and scary, though. Hmm. That's how I roll. Love the scary movies. Why not? All right, folks. Hey, it's already 1.33 p.m. Been on here for almost an hour. Got on here a bit early. Everything's starting to fit together. Glad to see a few folks could make it today. Bad, uh, it's a bad day. I know it's a weekend, Labor Day. A lot of people are out of town. At Starbucks, I went this morning, yesterday morning, morning before, morning before, morning before, morning before. But anyway, just kidding. Uh, it was almost dead this morning. Uh, people going out of town. Tomorrow, for sure, it'll be almost dead. People won't be back till Monday evening for work Tuesday. So, anyhow. I think I've covered about everything I was going to talk about. Anybody have anything to talk about before I sign off? Let it be heard now or forever hold thy peace. Da -da 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 -da. And I'll wait and I shall count to ten. Well... Okay. And don't forget to eat all oh, your vegetables. Oh, yes. Bye, Frank. Oh, bye, Carol. Tell Andrew hugs. Uh, all right. We are going to fly away. Who knows? We may even jam a little bit. You never know over here, right? When the mood hits, do it. Take care, folks. Hey, for real. Be safe this weekend, starting yesterday, today, tomorrow. It can really get bad out there because all the people that are on the phone texting, a lot of people be drinking, getting buzzed. Just be careful, be safe, and watch for those who are, are not paying attention on the road. Don't be another statistic. 
do not text and drive. You not take only your life in your hands, but others as well. Peace. God bless. Take care. Until our next venture, ride hard, ride free. Later, folks. We're out of here. Goodbye. La. La, 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 la.